we've been talking about capacity a lot at our stores um, and among our, our leader management team uh, for the last couple of years. You know, what have we been putting out into our communities um, for our time and our resources and our, our money, our energy? What have we been putting out there and what are we really getting back? And what are we doing uh, to build relationships with with these outside organizations that truly meet our needs. There's a lot of places that People's Food Co-op and I think all of our co-ops have been traditionally spending uh, money on as far as donations and sponsorships, um, also things that we've been joining, uh, so associations uh, regionally and nationally, and it's because of the capacity um, demands of our co-ops, we really need to ask the question of how are how is the output of those resources really serving our ends as we define them? How are we getting uh, to meet our goals? And so um, we've also been recognizing that the demands on our co-ops are really changing very quickly, you know, depending on the competition that is coming in, depending on the kind of um, uh, access to other great food and, and local producers that our community has access to outside of our co-op. So a few things that we um, have committed to that I wanted to share and um, perhaps can help stir the pot as far as you're thinking about relationships with other organizations is that we do commit to staying at the table even when we are sitting at um, the table of an organization which maybe is even serving some needs counter to what we think are uh, important to our ends. I'm going to use the cooperative network as an example here. And I don't know where Greg went, but Greg will understand uh, what I mean. So the cooperative network is a, a Minnesota and Wisconsin organization. It serves co-ops of um, all kinds of, uh, across all sectors from farm to food to uh, electric. Uh, or it can serve those needs. But the voices that rise to the top because of the um, uh, amount of people on, that are part of the network uh, means that the legislation that the network lobbies for um, can be a counter to some of the environmental um, sustainability principles that we at the food co-ops believe in for our local organic farmers. By being at the table, and by committing to um, pay the dues and show up at the lobby days, along with all those guys in the suits, I have been able to say to representatives in both states, we are believing in the cooperative principles and we need you to hear that some of this legislation doesn't always serve the needs of the agriculture that we're trying to develop. Um, so meeting our ends, spending some time on things that don't always um, feel like they're completely aligned with where we are right now. But um, another place that we stay at the table is both of our stores are in downtown, um, downtown La Crosse, downtown Rochester. And we sit on the boards of the downtown associations. We have a staff member at each of, of those downtown boards. And we've committed many, many years to sponsoring all kinds of events for these downtown organizations. And, you know, sure, we're here. We're going to throw you some money. And sometimes we have to wonder how much of that is really coming back to us in true spending at our stores. Are they coming across the threshold and really um, putting their resources into, into the co-op that is a real asset? And so we have started to be pretty aggressive about demanding attention and saying, we're going to sponsor this event. We're sitting, <clears throat> we're sitting on these boards. We're going to be part of this. And we're also demanding exclusivity. This means we are blocking out other grocers. We're blocking out other food, et cetera, et cetera. And getting a little more sharp elbowed um, where appropriate in ways that serve our ends and which truly serve the, the local needs. And some of those questions are really uncomfortable. Um, I think, but I, I believe that, uh, Co-ops have been fairly passive in um, uh, saying we are here, uh, in, in that we haven't said we are here and we deserve this attention because we are giving 
to our communities. Um, and we've kind of let others come in and say that they are representing the communities. Um, so both of those are asking, you know, what would our competitors do? Not that we have to be our competitors, not that we're serving just one bottom line, we're still serving that triple bottom line, but really asking ourselves to be financially sustainable, to keep thriving financially, which is very clearly part of our ends and important to uh, the ongoing relevance of our co-ops. What would our competitors do in this situation where we're being asked to provide various resources to the community? Um, so we do a lot of collaborations, and I, I know many of you do as well, um, both with um, governmental organizations, perhaps through a, a, a Minnesota SHIP um, teaching classes to people who are using, um, uh, using SNAP dollars. Uh, but, but also we really, and those are great collaborations, but we need to be collaborating as well with um, f other for-profit businesses who are overlapping with our values and uh, saying with them, we have something to provide here. We're not just going to sit back and wait for our community to be taken over by competitors who co-opt our language and who say that they've got all of these local relationships that they're leveraging. We were leveraging those first, and we need to be aggressive about uh, staying at the table and saying that we have, we have impact to provide uh, through those organizational relationships. <laughs> Thanks, Lizzie.